Hello, and welcome to today's lesson. My name is Amber Dukowski, but you can call me Mrs. D. I am an art educator at Towson University. Today, we are going to be talking about an adorable surprise. Now, you might be wondering what on earth could that be? First, we need to talk about doors. Yes, doors. There are many different types of doors in and around our world. All shapes and sizes, colors, and designs. Some are rounded, arched, and square. Some doors even have unique door handles, like spoons or delicately designed handles and door knockers. There are so many different ways doors can be created to give a home a personalized feel. Unfortunately, no one truly knows who invented the door, only that it was first incepted somewhere in central Egypt, as the first recorded history of doors was found in Egyptian tomb paintings over 4,000 years ago. These doors were usually made out of bronze and included the use of single, double, sliding, and folding doors. They would continue to evolve along with society as doors have been symbolic and evolved throughout various cultures for centuries. Looking at these doors currently, what could be behind these doors? People? Animals? Something magical? Keep this in mind for later. Let's take a look at some artists that have used doors for their inspiration. The first example is of an owl door. This is a photograph of someone's door in Denmark. This photograph is among others from around the world that showcases unique doors. It is very interesting how they chose an owl for the door. I wonder if it could be their favorite animal, or a deeper meaning behind it. Whoever made the door considered the symmetry of the owl. Symmetry is defined as the balance among the parts of something. Next, we have a door designed by Adrienne Gallardi. She's an artist from Michigan that gained a lot of social media attention after she posted it online. People started reaching out to her and asking if she could paint their doors, which she provides through her website. Her main goal is to bring artwork and happiness into local neighborhoods and cities. She considers the composition of the door when painting. Composition is defined as the arrangement of elements within the pictorial space, or in other words, how the artwork is positioned and arranged from the view of the viewer. Lastly, we have work by Victoria Krevinchiko. She creates watercolor drawings of doors from all over the world. This door is of 6 Rue de Lac in Brussels, Belgium. Her work features point of view. This is used to create interest for the viewer the viewer by focusing the attention on a certain part of the image. Now, you're probably wondering what we will be making today. Well, let's get into the details next. You will be creating a small book today that features three different panels you will design. The first two panels will be the door of your design, while the inside will be your surprise. Remember what you had to keep in mind for later? What could be behind those doors? People? Animals? Something magical? Use these ideas to help create your book. You could have something that represents you behind the door, like your favorite foods or an object. You could have a fantasy land inspired by your favorite story. Or you could also tell a story using the doors to hint what's behind them, such as adding small details like my pirate doors that lead to show a map using elements like bones and gold. Here is another example of ideas for your doors. I use cats and flowers as my inspiration for what was behind my doors. Like mine, you can add an inspiring message surprise. Your final piece will be a small book that tells a story about these doors. Could the colors be related to what's inside? What about the design of the doors? Keep these thoughts in mind when drawing your design. There's no right or wrong way to do this. Just have fun. You will need the following materials to get started. Colored pencils, paper that is sized at 8.5 by 11, 65 pound paper is preferred but not required. Use the thickest paper you can find. Scissors, a black pen for outlines, a pencil for sketching, a ruler, and a manual pencil sharpener. This is best used with colored pencils as they can break easily if using an electric pencil sharpener. Next, we will watch a demonstration of how to create your book. You can follow along with me as we go if you choose. You will need the following supplies. A manual pencil sharpener, scissors, pencil, ruler, colored pencils, black pens for outlines, and your paper. I am using 65 pound paper, otherwise known as cardstock. This has a similar feel to cards you get with a gift. If you don't have any handy, find the thickest paper you can as it will make the final piece more sturdy and easier to color. Let's clear some of these supplies out of the way so we have room to work. Fold your paper hamburger style, making sure to press down on the crease. Then, fold your paper again hot dog style. You should now see four fold lines. 
Next, we will fold the paper again only to the middle line we created. Then we will have many little boxes. Now get your scissors out and cut along the paper all the way across. Now we have our little book and an extra. We will need that for later. Now, let's write down some ideas first before sketching. We could draw pirates, pets, friends, tigers or wild animals, nature, or family. Make sure to write out a few ideas to help think of what you can create. I sketched out some small boxes to roughly draw my idea down on paper before I got started. You will be utilizing three frames of the book for your drawing. I sketched out my ideas for each of the frames as it was easier to have an idea of what I wanted before I dove into the drawing. I added small details like a bone handle and some gold to hint about the treasure. Think about how your door can be a metaphor to what is your surprise inside. Consider how the elements relate to the inside. Add these details to help reinforce the element of surprise. Next, I get ready to start my book. I used a ruler to help draw some of the lines for the bars on the window. Feel free to use the ruler as needed. Once I finished sketching out the first store, I got out my colored pencils next. When coloring with colored pencils, keep in mind the pressure you are using when coloring as light and hard pressure can change how the color will appear on the paper. This can be helpful if you want to add shading. As you are drawing, keep in mind those terms, symmetry, composition, and point of view. You can use all three when creating your book. I am adding final touches to the first frame of my door booklet. You can go back using the black pen to add outlines. I chose to leave it out since I like the way it looked. Now I will work on the next set of frames, but before I do, I want to make sure I add my name to the back in case it gets lost or misplaced. As I start to draw my next set of frames, I make sure to consider symmetry as I'm drawing the doors, as I want them to look as even as possible. I used a harder pressure with the colored pencils to help with layering the colors. Feel free to use this technique when coloring and make sure to test the colors on a separate piece of paper to make sure you like it. Then, we have our first and second frames finished. Now, let's start on the third. Make sure to consider the composition of the frame, as this will help to create the point of view for when it is opened. Our adorable surprise books are finished. Now you have an adorable book with a hidden surprise. I hope you had fun. Thanks for watching. I hope you had fun creating your adorable surprise books. Thank you for joining my lesson. I can't wait to see what you created.